testing, testing, one, two, three. In this recording, we're going to look at the August Mix-Max assignment that utilizes Excel. In the first paragraph, it tells you about the contract itself. Uh, instead of a $45,000 loan, we're going to assume that a bond was issued at five-year, 12% APR, annual percentage rate, uh, compounded semi-annually. So it's a little different than the lecture notes because interest is going to be paid every six months. So I've listed up here the time frame for the payback, but there will be interest payments every six months. So there's actually going to be 10 payment periods. And so if we think $45,000 is the principal, the six month rate is 6%. So every six months, we are promising to pay $2,700 to our bondholders. So let's put that in our schedule here. Okay, so we have 10 payments of $2,700 every six months and then at the end of the life of the bond, there will be this big $45,000 principal payment. So the contract, within the contract, we are promising to pay these amounts to the bondholders in the future. Now, once you figure that out, then from here on out, just ignore the bond contract itself because everything else now is gonna to move to the market. And remember, in the market, both interest rates and price become variables. So uh, now we want to ignore this rate and the principal on the contract. The contract just tells us the payback terms. Now we want to move to the market and see what's going on there. So in the first one, uh, let's look at that. Uh, when you enter it in in your amortization table, uh, you know, you've got 10 periods. Um, the market rate was also 12%, so that's 6% semi-annually. And then you should have a formula here for your present value, and you should arrive at $45,000 for that. And again, the payment's $2,745,000. Okay, and then, you know, when you filled out your amortization table, it should look like this, or will look like this, depending on whether you've done this assignment yet, or you're viewing this ahead of time. Let's also note that these two columns are our source for journal entries. So, for the interest. Um, let me back up a little bit. Let's record the bond itself. So on January 1, cash will come in and we'll record bonds payable on long-term debt of $45,000. So these last three columns over here are what we're gonna see, uh, actually what we're gonna see on the balance sheet under for long-term debt. So we don't have a premium or discount, we just have a long-term uh, bond account, bonds payable under long-term debt. So that goes in there, and then at the end, every six month, the end of each month, six month period, uh, we'll make a journal entry to debit the expense and credit either cash or interest payable. So where I only made one, this would actually happen 10 times. You know, uh, 630, 1231, 630, 1231, et cetera, et cetera. And then at the end of the life of the bond, after we've recorded each of these $2,700 payments, we also have this $45,000 payment, and we record that by reducing the bonds payable, credit to cash. That will zero out our bonds payable, and now it has a zero carrying value, all right? Okay, let's go on to the next one. In the next one, uh, market rates had gone down. So we're gonna have a 5% semi-annual payment per, uh, interest rate. So when you key in all the variables, again, I'm going back from this sheet where there's 10 payment periods, $2,700 every six months, $45,000 at the end, there's a future value. When I key all that in, I'll calculate my present value to be 48,474. So the journal entry, cash comes in for that, put the face amount in months payable, and we plug the difference to the premium to balance. So now we're gonna have on the balance sheet, under long-term debt, these three dollar amounts. So the bonds payable is a liability, but the premium is an additional liability. So we have two liability accounts when added together, 
equal this carrying value. Then, at the end of each period, we're going to credit cash or interest payable, debit interest expense, so our debit is less uh, than our credit, so we'll need another debit to balance. So these three columns are our source of journal entry. Debit interest expense, credit cash or interest payable, and we need to plug the difference to the premium and we reduce that. So the premium is going to go down each year by the amount of the amortization. So I just listed the first one, but you know, each year these would be the dollar amounts for that journal entry, or excuse me, every, I said each year, excuse me, every six months, this would be the journal entry. And then at the end of the life of the bond, recall, after we make all these journal entries for the $2,700 cash payment, we also have that $45,000 payment on the bonds payable. And then that would zero out the bond and the carrying value. Now the other thing I wanted to look at today is have us focus on this interest expense. So stop and look at, look what's going on with interest expense. It's actually going down over the life of the bond. Interest expense decreases over time. So my question for you is why is it decreasing? So think about that for a minute. What are the relationships here? Well, interest expense goes down because it's based on carrying value, right? We're taking this 5% times carrying value, and we can see that carrying value likewise is going down. Well, why is it going down? Carrying value represents our real debt. Well, why is debt going down? Well, let's look at this entry. So if we have a $2,700 cash payment to our creditors, so anytime you make a payment to your creditor, such as a bank, although in this case it's bondholders, that cash payment will consist of interest, and it may also consist of principal. So let's look at this $2,700 payment. Um, the real interest cost is $2,424. So if I pay $2,700, uh, and keep in mind this $2,700 is in the form of interest, and I want to put quotation marks, the form of interest, quote, quote, it's not really our interest cost. It just becomes an annuity payment based on contract terms. So we have this annuity payment of $2,700. The real interest cost is $2,424. Well, if I pay more than my interest cost, the additional $276 is really a principal payment. So my real interest cost is this, and then we're going to you know, tack on this 276 and reduce our principal. And notice the carrying value of the bond goes down by that amount year, six months, every every period. Every period it's going to go down by that. So 48199 minus 290 will give you this 47908. So the premium goes down, we reduce the premium, it's going to go down. Uh, so it's a liability. So our total carrying value will go down. So the premium goes down. Given the payable and the premium are added together to get carrying value, so carrying value will go down. And it's because cash paid out exceeds the interest cost, the additional amount is applied to principal. All right, let's do the last one, the bond selling at a discount. So here again, uh, we have a change in the market rate. So when we go to our calculator, we'll enter that in, along with our payment and our $45,000 payback based on the contract. And you should solve for present value to be 41839 Make your journal entry, cash comes in for that, put face value on the bonds payable, those don't equal, I need a debit, debit the discount on bonds payable. So now on the balance sheet, under long-term debt, or long-term liabilities if you will, uh, we would have these three numbers. So where bonds payable is a liability, the discount is a contra liability or a contra or negative liability, if you will. So it's a contra liability, a negative liability. Uh, over here, again, our source for journal entries. If I have a debit of $29.29 and a credit of $2,700, I need another credit to balance. So these three columns are our source of journal entries at each period end. So at 6.30, I debit interest expense credit cash or the interest payable for the $2,700. Those don't equal. I need another credit to balance 
I'll credit the discount to reduce it and amortize it. Okay, so every uh, at the end of each six month period, I'll make I'll use these numbers for my debit to interest expense, credit to cash, and credit to the discount. Then at the end of the life of the bond, we make this big balloon payment of forty-five thousand dollars, and we end up with zero and bonds payable. Now let's do the same thing with this bond. Interest expense actually increases over time. Well, why is it increasing? Okay, well it's increasing. One of the reasons is carrying value also goes up. But why does carrying value go up? Well, let's go back and look at, look at our interest payment. And again, it's in the form of interest. So we pay $2,700. But our real interest cost, our real interest cost is $2,929. Well, what are your creditors going to do when you have a deficit like this? Right? I paid $2,700, but my real interest cost is $2,929. They're not going to ignore that. So we have a deficit of $229, and we are going to increase our carrying value, or our real principal, if you will. The real principal of our debt is going to go up. The amount that we really are borrowing is going to go up. So notice, here's, you know, we started with $41,839. We were short 229, so we borrow that. And so our carrying value, which represents our real debt, will go up as well. So that's the finance piece. Now the accounting makes this happen by shrinking the negative account. So we shrink the negative, the discount down, and when we shrink that negative amount, carrying value goes up. So let's kind of summarize what we've done. We had a bond that, w that had a car value of $45,000. And at the end of the five years, so let's just put five years here, when that bond was sold uh, at $45,000 at par, that was its carrying value. We also saw that the bond initially, at the beginning of the first year, sold at a premium. That was the $48,575, or excuse me, $475. 48475 So that when it sold at a premium, what we did to the bonds pay up, the carrying value of the bonds, is we, those carrying value went down and down so that at the very end, before that last payment, the carrying value was $45,000. let us take a peek at that. So here's the bond that sold at a premium of 48475 um, the carrying value, I have 45, 429, but right after this amortization, you know, in the last year, this will go down. Before this payment, there would have been a balance here. Bonds payable still would have been 45,000, and we would have had a carrying value of 45,000 right before that last payment. And then after this $45,000 payment, then bonds payable would zero out along with the premium and we would have zero carrying value. So I'm really referring to this, this $45,000 carrying value. So the accounting system started at a carrying value of 48,475, but it reduced it down to 45,000 right before the, the payment of the principal. And likewise, when those bonds were sold at a discount, of 41,839, we started with that, and then the carrying value grew and grew and grew right up before that last payment of 45000 So in all cases, the carrying value will equal that face amount, the contract amount, uh, at the end of the life of the bond.